You know, one thing that I found as I was studying this is that the experience of the New Testament church and the experience of the Waldensian, I'll call them the Waldensian church, is very similar. Right. In the New Testament, the devil used persecution to destroy the church. And then when that didn't work, he used prosperity to try and deviate the church a little bit. With the Waldensians, it was different. They used prosperity and acceptance to get their way into the church. But when the Waldensians said, no, sola scriptura, the Bible, the Bible alone, then persecution came. It's the opposite, but it's the same. Let me continue with this, this uh, timeline. And I want you to think. I want you to actually put yourself there. What would you do? Would you stand up for truth? Would you stand up for truth, or would you do what comes easy? Um, we're going to keep going with the timeline. Now we're in Italy. In 1650, the Marques di Pianeta was a very zealous Catholic woman. She loved her church. She created an organization to fundraise for the church. But the fundraising was for the purpose of converting people to Catholicism. So what they would do is this. She would go and visit people and, and get money. But she also had a network of, of fellow Catholics, people that, that agreed with her. And she would say, Beverly, uh, do you know of any Protestants that are having trouble maybe in their business or personal life? And she may say, well, you know what? I know that the baker, the baker, uh, his brother so-and-so, his business is not doing too well. He's in danger of having the bakery closed. So this is what she would do. She or one of her representatives would go see the baker and they say, uh, Mr. Baker, I understand business isn't going too well. Well, yes, you know, the business is not doing too well. I, uh, you know, it's, I think it's because I'm, I'm Protestant, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of Catholics who are not doing too well. I'll tell you what. I will, I'll help you out. How much money do you need? You need someone? I'll give you this money. Only one string attached. I want you to convert to my faith. Come to my church. What would you do if your business was going under and someone said, oh, let me, let me, listen, I'll make it easy for you, Mr. Baker. You don't have to convert. All you got to do is come to the Mass. That's all you got to do. You can believe what you want. Just come to the Mass. What would you do if you owned a business that was ready to go under? Someone offered you the money to bail out and all you had to do was go to the Mass. Well, would you go? So, the Marquis de Panetta had this, this mission that she had, this ministry to convert people to her faith. And that's how she did it. There were Protestants who had been jailed, who bought their freedom at the expense of their faith. There were people that would accept positions of power and authority and, ex and give up their faith. This was something that was well received, let me put it that way, among some of the people in the Waldensian faith. As time went on, she got to the point where her health was in danger. She knew she was going to die. She called her husband to her bedside. And she said, husband, uh, he is the Duke of Savoy, by the way, not that that matters, but... She said, husband, I'm going to die. I'm going to die so I'm sick. It is very important to me that you carry on my mission, my ministry to convert people to the faith. And so what she did is she said, I'm going to leave you a large sum of money. However, in order for you to get this money, there are certain conditions you've got to meet. I want to work to reach these Waldensians to convert them to the Catholic, to the Catholic faith. And he said, fine, I'll take the money. I'll, I'll do what you need. Well, the Duke was a military man. And when you want somebody to do something that they don't want to do, how, does, how do military people solve it? Military people are trained to kill people and break things. He said, we'll do it the best way we know how. We will force them to convert to the Catholic faith. January 25, this is the middle of winter in northern Italy. In January 25, 1655, came what they call the Order of Gastaldo, and this is what the decree said. All Waldensi families have three days to leave, or they will die. You have 20 days in which to sell your house and all of your belongings. And you can only sell it to a Romanist, in other words, a, a person of the Catholic faith. 20 days to sell your property, you got three days to leave. Now if you had three days in the middle of winter to leave, by the way, you don't have a car. You don't have a car, you don't have heat. You have to get out and leave. Some of the Waldensians had already moved up into the Piedmont Mountains in northern Italy, living up there in the woods, in the country. These people had to leave and go meet their, their brethren. 
But the decree said this. It said, uh, those who were willing to leave the Protestant faith were exempt from this command. And how do you prove it? All you got to do is go to the Mass. If you go to Mass, you don't have to leave your house in three days. You don't have to sell all your possessions within 20 days. You won't die. Now, how many are, have a Catholic background here? Okay. How many of you have been to Mass, Catholic Mass? Does it hurt to go to Mass? No. Does it hurt? Is it scary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, 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 are they going to cook you? Put you in a pot? Eat you? What's the big deal? Why not just go to the Mass? Because they held true to their principles. Let me share with you the term transubstantiation. In the Catholic Church, we, we, do, we, we don't call it Mass, we do Communion, but, but it's, it's a, a similar type of thing. In the Catholic Communion, in the Catholic Church, when they do Mass, they truly believe and they teach that their priests have the power. They actually they have the bread and the wine, that they actually become the body and the blood of Jesus. The Catholic priest, they, through their sacraments, through their prayer, in the midst of their prayer, the body, the, 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 they call it the, the host, the bread actually becomes the blood and body of Christ. And so you're partaking of the actual body, body and blood of Christ. And the Waldensians, in reading the scriptures, let me, let me share with you a text. Would you turn to Hebrews chapter 6 with me? Hebrews chapter 6. And I'm, I'm going to start the verse 4, Hebrews 6, 4. I'm going to wait a second for you to find your, your spot, your, your page. This is, what, this is what the Bible says. Listen to what the Bible says. It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. It says, it's impossible if they fall away to renew them to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God again and put Him to an open shame. The idea of crucifying God again is not a good thing in the sight of the Bible. To make the bread and the blood of Christ and then break it and then give it to the people is in a sense crucifying Jesus again. And the Waldensians were horrified that they would do such a thing to their Lord and Savior. These things are symbols of Jesus' body and blood, broken for us at Calvary, but they're not the real thing. And to give a Catholic priest that type of power, that man can make Jesus come down and become bread was, was horrific to these people. They could not deal with it. We cannot go to the Mass. It will violate our conscience. We would be violating our belief in God. And I say, what is the big deal? It's just bread. It's just juice or wine for men and wine. What's the big deal, Mr. Walden? So just go to the Mass. Are you going to lose your house and your life over something as simple as Principle? Mm. Oh, give me a break. You know I'm kidding, right? Yeah. All right. In Matthew chapter 24, when Jesus is talking about the last days, one of the things he tells the people, he says, pray that your flight, when you're fleeing, pray that it's not in the winter or on the Sabbath day. Mm. I think Jesus was looking and speaking prophetically because the Waldensians, January 25, 1655, had to leave everything and hide in the mountains in the middle of the winter. Men, women, children, old and young. One minister, Wal one Waldensi minister had 2,000 congregants that were part of his church. 2,000. And he writes, he says, 2,000 church members, all of them chose to leave their homes. And they walked the trail, the mountain snowy trail, to the mountains to meet their Waldensi brethren. And he writes, I would see trails of blood from the traveling in the winter, falling, getting hurt, of people continuing to go up. I watched the trail of blood up that mountain. He says, I wanted to cry.
cry and jump for joy at the same time. I'm paraphrasing because he wrote it in more like a King James, Elizabethan type of English. What would you do 